I warmly welcome you again, brothers and sisters. And it is such a delight to have you, even in our Bible study today. In the last lesson, we concluded chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews. There we saw a catalogue of faithful people. Now the author moves from his explanation of what persevering faith looks like. Now he moves on to telling us how to order our lives in a similar faith race. The application of what we learned from the heroes is what we have to consider now. We are told to run the race that is set before us with perseverance until the end. The heroes of faith listed in chapter 11 kept running the race when it looked as if they wouldn't win, even in the midst of suffering and opposition. We are also told how the race is to be run. We must throw off everything that hinders us. Maybe they are those things that ties us to this material world. Maybe sin. Basically, we are to rid ourselves of anything that prevents us from focusing our faith in God and the hope of His better promises. We are also told to look on to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. He also went through great suffering from reaching His personal goal of exaltation to the right hand of God. The majesty. There is no superior example than Jesus Christ, who is also enabling us to run with endurance. Let us commit ourselves in prayer as we study this lesson in detail. Welcome to Through the Bible series, my dear friend. Hebrews chapter 12. We are in the practical section of the epistle to the Hebrews, where we see that Christ brings better benefits and duties. Chapter 11 is the faith chapter, then chapter 12 is the hope chapter, and then chapter 13 is the love chapter, faith, hope, and love, 11, 12, and 13 respectively. Let's read verses 1 and 2 of Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We read in the first part of this episode of the peril of drifting, that is of just being hearers and drifting along and doing nothing at all about God's salvation. Now here in the last part of this episode, the writer is speaking to those who claim to be believers of the peril of remaining stationary. He is saying, let's get into the race. Let's get moving and not just drift along. Let's get on track. Let's get down. We are racers. I would call that one of the greatest dangers in the life of a believer is the peril of just remaining stationary and being spectators and doing absolutely nothing. When someone becomes lost in the extreme cold of the far north, there is grave danger of freezing to death. The first step in that process is to fall asleep. You have to fight sleep and you must keep moving or you will freeze to death. In a spiritual sense, the danger is the same for us as believers. We have to wake up. We have to get down on the track and run the race and to keep moving forward in our relationship with Christ. The moment we stop and remain stationary, we are spelling defeat for ourselves. Wherefore, verse 1 of Hebrews 12, Wherefore, we are told we are to move out and we are to live by faith. Why? Wherefore is another one of those little words that cement the chapter that goes before with the chapter that is coming up. And that is what it does here. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. 
Does it mean the Old Testament saints, many of whom were listed in chapter 11, and they are sitting in the grandstand watching us run the race of life today? Let's remember this, my dear friend. The witnesses are not mere spectators sitting on the grandstand watching us run. Remember that they are the ones who have already run the race down here. They were at one time had participated in this race and they had come out as victors. They came out victorious and they experienced victory and there they are as victors telling us or showing us or inspiring us that we can do the same. They are the ones who are seated at the grandstand as it were having won the race. They're not just telling us or cheering us on simply because we are in the race, but they are proving to us that since they won, we too can win. Those who would be called a howling success by the world ran the race by faith, and those who suffered what the world would call miserable defeat also ran the race by faith. Although they suffered and were slain by the sword, they were just as great heroes. They are all witnesses to us as we run. We watched them as we went through chapter 11. And there were many more in the Old Testament. As the writer told us, the time would fail him to tell of all of them. They witnessed to us and encouraged us to run by faith and to live by faith. Therefore, the life of a believer is here likened to a Greek race. Christ is the way to God and along the way, the believer as a soldier is to stand firm as a believer is to walk. But as an athlete, he is to run the race. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We have here another let us salad. Now this is not a danger signal that is put up here at all, but it is a challenge to us. Let us now get out of this grandstand, let us get down on the race course of life, and let us do whatever God has called us to do, wherever he has called us to live, and move and have our being. Let us run the life of faith. Let us move out for God. That is the whole thought here. We are challenged to run with patience. Having laid aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us or entangles us, God has saved us from sin. He has brought us into the heavens, actually into the holy place. And he has made us to sit in heavenly places. He's given to us his Holy Spirit. But in spite of all that he has provided, the average believer falls down and stumbles and wanders like a man lost in the dark. I'll come back to the same string which I play on all the time. Because I think this is the answer. The problem is that believers do not go on with God. They get saved, they give a testimony of their salvation, and that's it. They never maintain a serious study of the word of God, which is, which is essential to growth. They are like the little girl who fell out of bed one night. When the little girl began to cry, her mother rushed in and said, How come you fell out of bed? The little girl replied, I think I stayed too close to the place where I got in. Well, my dear friend, that is the problem of many a believer today. We stumble, we fall and fail because we are staying too close to the place where we got in. We need to go on. This is the race, you know. We've got to keep moving, keep going forward. The believer's life is a race win or lose, and it is the only race where everybody can win. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 26, we read, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, 
I'm picking out a few phrases from these verses. They all run to receive a prize. He went on to say, I therefore so run not as uncertainly. And again he rebuked some of his followers saying, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you? In Galatians chapter 5 verse 7. We are encouraged by these witnesses. They are not mere spectators. They are testifying to us. They are examples to us who went on ahead of us. They are in the cheering section, encouraging us to run the life of faith. They knew what are the difficulties, what are the challenges. They know exactly how we would be feeling when we are on that race. You know, so often on the field when a team is playing, suppose football, the spectators have different things to say how the players should have played. Half of them have no clue what is going on on the grounds because they've never played. They don't realize the amount of training these individuals would have gone through, the challenges that they have to face. Here they are on the grandstand making all those comments. But my dear friend, the people who went on ahead of us, as they sit on the grandstands, they know exactly what and how we are feeling when we are running the race of life. They are not just commenting, they are not making remarks or criticizing. They are the ones who are up there encouraging us. I could do it, you can do it too. Abraham could be sitting up there and just saying the same thing. I have failed, I have made mistakes, but I kept moving on and I have come, I have finished. So can you. Keep moving on, keep running, keep going towards the goal. That should be your first and prime most desire. We are encouraged by these witnesses. They are not spectators, they are testifying to us. They are in the cheering section, encouraging us to run the Christian life. Abraham is saying to you and me, move out by faith. Moses is saying to you and me, move out by faith. Daniel is saying the same thing as well. Move out by faith. Now, there are two conditions to be met. Lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. What does he mean by lay aside every weight? Weights are highly unnecessary in a race. In fact, they are a hindrance. We ought not to be using weights. Well, I'm sure you've seen races how people, after they have warmed up, what do they do? They remove all the extra attire so that they could take the bare minimum to run the race. Even that counts. In the life of a believer, there are a lot of things that are not wrong in and of themselves. There are many things that we could or could not do. But then, when you look at it from God's point of view, and when you think of the race of life, and think about the need to win, well, then a lot of these things have to be done away with. There are many things that are good, but then they are not beneficial in the race. We need to remember that. They are hindrances. Well, just take a look at the way you spend your time. There are many things that are probably good. The time you spend with friends, the time you spend just sitting around. But then are they really beneficial when you think of the race that you are on, the race of life, the race that God has put you in, in the Christian life that you are in? Well, my dear friend, I think we've got to evaluate all the time we waste, just while it away in the light of the race that we are on. Certain things are unnecessary and we've got to do our best to just get rid of these unnecessary hindrances and to just focus on the race that we are on. Yes, we need to have a goal, we need to have a vision and we need to move on in that direction. Any other hindrances, even though they might be good, well, in our case, for our race that God has set for us, 
Well, we've got to get rid of that. Think of this. I'm sure you spend a lot of time probably reading books or you enjoy watching certain programs. But then when it's time for exams, what do you do? Well, if you want to win and if you want to do well in your exams, you know you've got to spend less time. If not, just cut it out altogether until the exams are over. Don't you do that? Well, the same goes here in our life as a believer. As we are walking and running this life of faith, we've got to evaluate everything that we do. Everything that we do, we need to be doing it for the glory of God. And if there are anything, if there is anything that is coming in between your effectiveness and preventing you from actually moving forward in a much more rapid way, well, my dear friend, cut it out. Only then you'll be able to experience a great amount of victories. Well, you are in a race, aren't you? Do you want to win? Are you looking to Jesus? That has to become the most important thing. We just saw about the need to get rid of hindrances, those unnecessary things that prevent us from being effective. Now, the next phrase talks about the sin which doth so easily beset us or entangle us. Now, what is the sin? This is not sin in general. It is the sin. Again, we are cast back into the previous chapter by the wherefore which opened this chapter. What was the great sin in the last chapter? It was unbelief. Unbelief is the sin and there is nothing which will hold you back as unbelief will. Remember that. Well, have you ever tried to run a race with the weight of a sack of wheat on your shoulder and your feet stuck inside an empty sack? Well, it would first of all be a very funny sight and I doubt you would ever get across few meters. You will never be able to do it and you cannot do it in the Christian life either. Unbelief is what holds many of us back and it gets us entangled in all kinds of messes and finally we fall. Well, I hope you've got this straight. Let us lay aside every weight. And then the sin which doth so easily entangle us. And then let us run with patience. There are two let us right here. Laying aside every weight and getting rid of sin. And then it's talking about running the race that is set before us. And then looking unto Jesus. That should be our focus. Remember, we shouldn't be focused on the sin. We shouldn't be saying, I should get rid of this. I should not do this. My dear friend, I think we need to be focused on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Our eyes should be looking up to him. We should simply get rid of everything else, but our eyes should be focused on the end of the race. And remember who for the joy that was set before him, Christ endured the cross, despising the shame. Well, we need to do the same. Thinking of the joy that is before us, we need to press on in this race, no matter what kind of struggle we might have to go through. Let's keep on moving ahead. And like these witnesses who are seated on the grandstand cheering us, Remember, there is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords sitting there at the right hand of the throne of God. And he too ran this race and he knows exactly how we feel. My dear friend, he is not looking at you whether you're going to fail, whether you're going to fall. But he is telling you, I know what it means. You can do it. Keep moving on towards the goal. Get on track. Go for the gold, keep in shape, stay on the track, and I'm sure you will win. That is what Jesus Christ is telling each one of us. Dear friend, as we bring this to a close, I'd like to continue to urge you to stay on track and press towards the goal. Get on track, my dear friend. Thank you and God bless. The one thing that always keeps us steady on this path 
is the journey of the pathfinder himself. Our Lord Jesus came to this world and endured so many difficulties, yet he looked beyond the painful circumstances to the reward that was before him. He despised shame. The cross became insignificant compared to the joy that was set before him. He became the pioneer of faith race we are. He has cleared a path for you and me. There will be hurdles along the way, but look to him who is waiting for you at the finish line. He has shown us how the race is to be run. More than just an example, we also realize he is the initiator and source of our faith, and he will complete and perfect it for us. Barnabas Linders said, Jesus perfects our faith because he enables those who hold fast to the Christian profession to reach the same goal. So don't be discouraged. He knows all our weaknesses and problems. He has not allowed any test in your life that will make you stumble. Faith allows you to have hope and see the reward that God has for you. As we have already read in chapter 6, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our foreigner Jesus has entered on our behalf. God bless you. Thank you.